Hello everyone, welcome to the 180 Q&A. We're going to start off with the plaintiff questioning. Ready? When you fail on August 15, did you fall on the carpeted surface or on the tile floor of the Florida building? On the tile floor, did you have any physical complaints at the time of your fall? A slight headache? Anything else? No, not that I can remember. How did you leave the place where the accident occurred? I called my office and someone picked me up. Where did you go following this? To the office. At some time following the accident, did you begin to have other physical complaints? Yes, on the following day. What type of complaint did you have at that time? Some back pain. Where was the back pain located? In my lower back. Would you describe that as a sharp pain or a dull pain? It was initially a sharp pain. When is the first time that you sought any medical treatment? I think the following day. Whom did you first see? Dr. James Daly in Miami. Had you previously seen Dr. Daly? Yes. When Dr. Daly examined you that day, did he give you a diagnosis or explain to you what was causing your pain? He did not. Did he give you any treatment at that time? He sent me for x-rays. After you had x-rays, did you see him again? Yes, I did. At that time, did he give you any diagnosis or explain to you what was causing your pain? He said he was unable to explain the pain and that the x-ray showed no visible damage. Did you subsequently treat with other doctors? Yes. Who else did you see? Dr. Martin Long in Tampa. Who referred you to Dr. Long? I had seen Dr. Long before. Was Dr. Long able to explain to you what was causing your pain? No, not at that time. Did you continue to have this low back pain and headaches when you saw Dr. Long? Yes, I did. How long did the headaches last? Three weeks, a month. It was one continuous headache. It never left me. So it was constantly there for three weeks to a month? Yes. Have you been bothered by any headaches since that went away? Not since it finally went away, no. Have you treated with any other doctors besides Dr. Daly and Dr. Long since the day of the accident? Dr. Richard Baker. Had you treated with Dr. Baker before? No. Who referred you to him? Carl Ross. Is she a friend of yours? That is Carl. I'm sorry, Carl. Yes, he is. Do you remember approximately when you first started treating with Dr. Baker? When I couldn't get rid of the back pain. Well, was that within, let's say, six months from when the accident occurred or a year? I believe so. Which one? Six months to a year, somewhere in there. Somewhere in that time frame, six months to a year, from the day of the accident, you saw Dr. Baker? Yes. How frequently were you treated, treating with Dr. Baker when you first went to him? Initially, a couple times a week. So for what period of time did you treat with him for a couple times a week? I guess that went on for about a month. Did you notice any improvement? Yes. After approximately a month, did your treatments lessen at that time? Yes. How often did you go after that? It's kind of a spasmatic thing now. My back still bothers me and I go to him when it gets worse. When was the last time you saw Dr. Baker? Probably two months ago. Why did you see him at that time? My back was bothering me a little more than usual. Did he treat you at that time? He did. What type of treatment did he give you? Specifically, I can't tell you. I do remember heat manipulation, stretching exercises, and massage. How much is your total bill with Dr. Breaker at this time? I would es estimate approximately $2,800. Okay, I'm going to switch transcripts. All right, this is going to be defense questioning. Did you ever ask Mr. Heron what he would have done had he determined that the amount of money in the cash register was, say, less than $25? No, sir. Did you ask him how much money he did observe in the cash register? No, sir. Did you ask him whether or not he made any sort of signal to the people outside, meaning Billy and Steve, as to how much money was located inside of the cash register? No, he indicated to me that while he was in the store, Billy and Steve came running into the market as this occurred, 
Prior to his thinking that they would come into the store, they came in as a surprise to him. He was surprised by their coming into the store at that time. At that time, yes. Did he say why he was surprised they came in at that time as opposed to some other time? No, sir. Did he say whether or not there were any other people located in the store at the time he arrived in the store? No, there were no other customers in the store at that time. He wasn't surprised because there were other people. They had earlier decided they didn't want to commit this crime in the presence of other people. I'm sorry, sir, I didn't understand. In other words, the reason for his being surprised wasn't because there were people in the store. They had earlier said they didn't want to commit the crime in the presence of other people. Objection, Your Honor. I will withdraw the question. Okay, all right. He didn't indicate why he was surprised, is that right? Yes, he said they ran into the store. They didn't walk. They ran into the store. That surprised him. Did he say when, if ever, he expected them to come into the store? No. Did he indicate whether his original plan was to leave the store and convey whatever information he had gotten to the other people before they came into the store? No, sir. You didn't go into that, is that correct? No. No further questions. Nothing further. You may step down. You are excused. People rest. Any defense to be offered at this time? Just exhibit A, Your Honor. All right, it will be received into evidence. Your Honor, I'm going to withhold my motion to have the defendant held to answer at this time. We would like to have the matter set over three weeks from this coming Friday, March 30th. That's correct, Your Honor. The defense so stipulate? Yes, yes, Your Honor. I would also like to be heard in the matter of bail. All right. We would ask that the matter be referred to the probation department for a pre-plea probation report. All right. The matter will be referred to the probation department for a pre-plea report. Do you wish to be heard on bail? Yes, Your Honor. In this case, the defendant turned himself into the police department some three hours after this crime allegedly was committed. He did so voluntarily. I talked to Detective Girk. He said the defendant was honest. Okay, and that's the end of that transcript. So I'm going to switch over to another one. There we go. This is plaintiff attorney. You didn't take it as a significant factor in this area of awareness, such as getting the gun and the ammunition that he tells that to Dr. Hunter, but later when he talks to you, he doesn't remember it, doesn't tell you about it. It was more than not telling me about it. He said he didn't remember it, but he knew that in the reports, he had said that he did remember it, and he assumed that he remembered it at the time, but at the time he talked with me, he didn't remember it. I didn't, he told you, did he not, that there were guns going off, but he didn't tell you about being aware of firing a gun out there, did he? I believe he only described to me seeing the lights, which looked like arc lights, and that he did not remember firing it, and I'm not certain that he said he remembered guns going off. He didn't remember being hit and didn't know that he was hit until after he was in the hospital. Okay, I believe in your report you indicate that all he remembers next is seeing lights, like arc welding, which he assumes were guns going off. Do you recall that phrase? If it's there, I don't know where it is, but if I said it, I must have. At the top of the second page of your report, yes, I see that. So, at least as to information he is giving you, you took this to be his state of mind, of his recall of the events of that evening. His recall at the time that I talked to him, yes. And did you notice in looking at the other psychiatric reports that his recall regarding the events of the drinking and the pizza, getting pizza and coming back to the bar were all pretty much the same? Your Honor, I'll object to that, assuming a fact not in evidence, 
Dr. Klatt hasn't testified with regard to reviewing any other psychiatric reports. Well, perhaps I can rephrase it another way. All right. Doctor, you have indicated before to us that there is a motivation that could be present with an individual charged with a serious <clears throat> offense to perhaps not be a 100% candid with people that are taking down notes and recalling what he is saying. That is certainly true. There is a motivation to perhaps give themselves the benefits of the doubt. That might be true. And your report is based on information you received from the defendant, plus the information that I read that was presented to me as to his state of mind. Yes, that is correct. Okay, that concludes the Q&A practice for the 180 class. Have a great day.